One of the most important psychedelic experiences of my life was a DMT experience. Also, Terrence was there, um, Ralph Metzner, um, Andy Weil, a few others. And we were um, sitting around um, at Esalen smoking DMT. And under the influence of DMT, which now this was the first time I've ever smoked DMT, um, I had this super rapid fraction of a second, like uh, dissolving of everything that I, well, first off I saw a horizontal line, then I saw a vertical line, then it turned into a color, red, then it was red, then it turned into cubes, then it turned into like an MC Escher kind of like, I don't know, you know, didn't make logical sense and then I was gone. And then it was just this period of um, five, 10 minutes of just feeling part of this um, enormous wave of um, billions of years of evolution, how mm -hmm. I had this sense that in my innermost sense of who I am uniquely individually, this inner voice that's talking to me that I didn't develop English, that that it's like a gift to me from millions of people. That So that even in my most innermost uh, sense it's not just me it's it's the product of everything that came before me i'm part of this bigger system and then i just thought wow just how many billions of years does it take to reach this point to self-awareness and all this and it was mm -hmm. glorious beautiful and then i had this thought um and and this is where this kind of um intellectual honesty i guess you could say i just thought well if i'm part of everything and everything's part of me then it's not just the good parts that hitler is part of me too yeah. And that was just this shock, like a stone sunk, you know, and, and I just was very moody for the whole next day. But it was that acknowledgement that each of us carries these potentials and what we activate is what matters, but what, what our potential are is the whole full range of things. I don't know if you can comment about the DMT trip itself and what it's like starting from the very basic geometric shapes <laughs> and then launching yourself into the context of the enormity of space and time and yeah. the human history. Is there anything else to be said about that kind of um, visually or physically or emotionally about that journey? What it's, what, what it's like, that brief journey that reveals so much? Well, I was with a group of people. The way we were doing it was, um, you know, each of us would smoke DMT, have 10, 15 minutes experience while we closed our eyes and you know everybody else was just chatting and then the person who did the DMT would come back and tell their story and what happened. And, and then we'd think <laughs> about it for a bit and then pass the pipe to the next person. And so this was like a whole wow. evening, you know. And, so um, even the, sorry to interrupt, even the conversations themselves then is part of the experience. Yeah, exactly, yes, yes. Because it's also what you bring back. Right. I mean, I think that's particularly for therapy. You know, it's not so much about what the experience is, but it's what you bring back and what do you integrate. And then also, um, how do you learn how to do these things on your own without the drugs? There, there is this way, because we're saying it's, it's sort of a core human experience, the drug is the mediator, but can we do this on our own? And once you've seen it and feel, felt it, then you have a little bit better sense to recreate it on your own, although you know, I've had dreams where I've been doing LSD and tripping. Mm -hmm. and it was just incredible. It was, I was tripping in my dreams, mm -hmm. but I had not taken LSD. Mm -hmm. So that there's this way in which we do that. So I, I would say that from the DMT experience, the sense of safety, that's what I was trying to get at with this, uh, the group of us and this group of friends trying to do this common exploration that if you have this sense of safety, you're, you're incredibly vulnerable because you are giving up your um, awareness, really, of what's happening around you. I, I think there's, what we're finding is that in our psychedelic research for PTSD um, and what we see with the vaccines, that, that even uh, African-Americans are reluctant to volunteer for vaccines because they haven't had that sense of safety from the medical establishment. Um, they don't volunteer for psychedelic therapy even as much. So the overlay has to be this sense of safety as you become vulnerable and looking inside, you're, you're not. Um, I, I was just actually told about how um, there's a lot of work being done inside prisons to teach mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And you know, so one, one of the, um, Charlene, who's my assistant, is, is trying to do work on um, 
helping people in prison you know, with trauma, potentially one day with MDMA or meditation or mindfulness. But one of the exercises was, you know, teaching people to, okay, here's how you deal with stress. You know, just close your eyes and deep breathe. And what, what Charlene was saying is people don't close their eyes in prison. You know, you, you yeah. don't feel safe to do that. So um, all, all that is just to say is that um, the context is the most important factor. So while I'll talk about the DMT experience, the, the context was this supportive sense of safety that I could be completely vulnerable and out of any kind of um, control. Women, I think, you know, often are less safe in this way than men because of all the sexual assaults. Um, but what it can do by taking the ego orientation um, offline to some extent, it opens you up to much more. And, and to make a bigger point of that, um, we could say that um, it's very similar to the Copernican revolution. And mm -hmm. you know, people thought that the earth was the center of the universe. And you know, the, the inquisition murdered people that questioned that. Uh, Father Bruno burned at the stake. Actually, one of the things he said, uh, I think that's worth um, all these years later um, saying, is that when the Inquisition um, sentenced him to burn at the stake for espousing this idea that the earth was not really the center of the universe, um, he said to the Inquisition, he said, um, your fear in sentencing me is greater than my fear in being sentenced that their worldview was so rigid yeah. that they had to wipe out anybody that would question it. And, and so this idea of psychedelics displacing our ego as the center of the universe and to realize that we are just rotating about on something much bigger than our individual life. You know, our, our ego is, is designed almost to protect this body while we're alive. And you can understand all the good reasons why that is but it also disconnects us from this bigger reality. And so the psychedelics, DMT, by knocking this sort of ego orientation or the default mode network uh, offline, you open up to the, the bigger sweeps of history. So in that uh, place of safety and vulnerability, in that fascinating group of people, when their ego was dissolved in this way, did they have similar experiences? Is there different places that their minds went? Yeah, so you know, once I, had this kind of shattering experience that Hitler's part of me. Yes. You know, no one else in the group had that. Probably a lot of them have maybe had that before or they, yeah. they realize that they're not just, you know, the good, the white hat, good people and that yes. they're all good and they're, you know, we've got to fight against the bad people. Mm -hmm. You know, so no, people will go in different places. And not only that, if you do it again, you'll go into a different place than you went to the first time. Unless you have not resolved the issue. So I had a sequence of LSD trips that were very difficult, but it was like coming to the same sort of conundrum, the same challenge um, that I was unable to overcome, this idea of letting go and really fully dissolving, um, letting the ego fully go. And, and I would have this sequence of trips over a couple months where I would reach this point where I was too scared to move forward and I would just be holding on. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are there are repeated themes sometimes. What Stan Groff has said, which I find very beautiful, is that the full expression of an emotion is the funeral pyre of that emotion. And what what that means is, if you can fully let in something, then the essence of um, of life has changed. Is that it moves on? That everything's in motion. Um, and if you can fully experience it, even if it's a sense that you're going to be trapped in eternity in this hellish state, if you surrender to that, that's the way out. You know, this full experience of something is this um, funeral pyre of that emotion. And so that runs against a lot of what modern psychiatry is doing too, which is to suppress symptoms and to and to instead of supporting people to kind of explore these insecurities mm -hmm. so that then they can contain them and then they can move on. So yeah, resistance is not uh, a way to make progress. Right, right. Um, although in one of the reasons why we do the supplemental dose during the MDMA or why there's advantages in a, a 10 hour LSD experience is that you have a lot of opportunities to come up against this resistance 
it may be too difficult for to deal with, and then you kind of push it aside, and then a couple hours later you come back to it, or you come back to it. <laughs> Press news every once in a while if you're not ready. It's hard to do that. I think th with MDMA you can negotiate. Mm. That's I think a, a part of its safety in a sense. You can have this like, oh, I should be talking about this, but I or I'm feeling this, but it's too much for me now. You can push it away, but with the classic psychedelics, this kind of membrane between the conscious and the unconscious that um, once you take the drug and it weakens this membrane and things are coming up, um, it's very difficult to negotiate with it. The, the, the key to successful uh, classic psychedelic trips is surrender. Mm 